This show contains features that may offend some viewers. Viewers discretion is advised. The emergency department is completely full. The beds in the department in the hospital are full, so nobody moves. So that I can't let this guy slip through the cracks. You asked me to quit. Ask Reno. Call up there and ask them. I was just laid off my job in March, so all I have is unemployment. These bills, these money bills. Heart rate is really high. It never had anything happen to me. It was like my invincible 20s. So whether it's benign or not, we call it cancer? It's okay. This is just a little cold. I okay. won't go until you're ready, okay, Deja? How did you realize that this was a story worth telling? Uh, you know, at first it was just, you know, we were every, like we were all over the hospital. One of the things that I noticed was that the waiting room was like a physical manifestation uh, of like our, our country, of like our healthcare crisis, of, uh, of community. It's a place where people came together that normally wouldn't come together. So you have like gangsters sitting next to nuns, sitting next to entrepreneurs, sitting next to people who just got laid off their job. And um, it, 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 it just struck me that it, not only was it a great metaphor for sort of waiting room, we're all waiting for, you know, but um, that it was a, a, a great stage for storytelling, and so that's, uh, that's kind of we took it from there. We're a public hospital, we're the safety net in society, we're an institution of last resort for so many people. Come on, sit with me. You want to see the doctor today, huh? Yeah. You trying to take the pain? Oh, okay. It's going to be okay, though. In order to have empathy toward a population, you need to walk in their shoes, you need to have some familiarity with them. The reality is we're all human beings and we're all we're all going to find ourselves on a rung of the ladder at some point in our, in our lives and you can go from having it all to having nothing overnight that we're all in this thing together whether we have health insurance or not we're all connected we're all vulnerable and that that common humanity is something that I think has gotten lost in our healthcare debate it's become an ideological political conversation and you know, what I was hoping that the film could do was reframe that debate in more human terms. Catch The Waiting Room at a theater near you. For KR News, I'm Aaron Sitt. How to pass the time in a doctor's waiting room. Before you see your doctor, you're going to have to wait. And wait. And wait. Here's how to alleviate the boredom. You will need good books and magazines games and puzzles, snacks, and creativity. While this video is awesome, it didn't go to medical school. Always consult your doctor for actual medical advice. Step one, catch up on some reading. Now's your chance to read all those books you always meant to and all those magazines you wanted to check out in 1982. Step two, play some games. Whether it's a crossword, a Sudoku puzzle, or a word search from highlights for children, playing a game will exercise your brain and make the time fly by. Magazine subscription cards make great materials for arts and crafts. Be creative. Step three, waiting for your name to be called can work up a powerful hunger. Bring a snack to munch on, or better yet, order in. Step four, get to know your fellow patients. Find out where they're from, what they do, and why they came to see the doctor. Or, time permitting, delve deeper by leading an informal rap session or guiding the group in trust exercises. Step five, take time for some art appreciation. Waiting rooms are filled with all sorts of interesting wall hangings. Serve up some wine and hors d'oeuvres and you've got yourself a gala art opening. Step six, when you just can't stand the wait any longer, call over some friends and have a dance party. Just be sure not to miss the big moment when your name is finally called. Did you know? 
According to data from the American Time Use Survey, Americans spend an average of four hours per year waiting for medical or dental care, with the average wait time being 45 minutes per visit. For more ideas on how to get better health for more people, check out youtube.com slash howcast. Now look, I have no bones to pick with doctors, but there's one thing I can't stand. You go to the doctor's office. You have an appointment, let's say, for 11 o'clock in the morning. You get there at 5 to 11. You talk to the nurse for a few minutes. By the time you sit down, it's 11 o'clock. And you're looking at the inner door, waiting for it to open, waiting for the doctor to say, hey, how good to see you. I'm glad you're on time. That doesn't happen. You sit in the waiting room, and you sit in the waiting room. But then, finally, the nurse says, Mr. Lee, or whatever your name is, you can come in now, and you feel as if you've won a jackpot, a raffle, a lottery. And you're so happy, your chest is bursting with enthusiasm, and you go in. But the doctor isn't there. The nurse says, doctor will be with you in a moment. And it's never a moment. And you're not even as comfortable as you were in the waiting room, which had nice padded chairs. So what I want to know is, why don't they let you sit outside until he's damn well ready to see you? Doctors of America, you listen to what I have to say, because pretty soon there'll be a public uprising, and I'll lead it. That's it for now. We always have um, so much stuff in the city, counties, everywhere. You have stuff like hospitals, doctor's offices, places you can go to for medical assistance. Now, there's some people who don't have an emergency toward what their symptom is. And then there's other people who have, of course, symptoms that need to be checked out ASAP immediately. But there's a big problem nowadays in the hospitals. You go into a hospital these days that's packed, that is full of staff members, nurses, and the whole bit, and doctors, you're basically thinking, okay, you know what, maybe I can get in. You go in, what the fuck happens? They leave you fucking sitting there for fucking hours. You know, honestly, I'm getting sick of that fucking shit. Because honestly, I'm telling you why right now. You know, I've been in the hospitals before, personally not for medical assistance, but for other with others who have had medical freaking assistance. You know, I've seen a couple of people who I've been with, they freaking have to wait almost an hour in the waiting room, at least two hours in the waiting room, just to see a fucking doctor. You know, seriously, no doctor should be that fucking busy, okay, that you can't deal with another patient also, okay? I mean, you have waiting rooms. Okay, you have rooms where people are being, what's, what's it called, rested at. Where they're getting their medical care with their medicine. You know, what does the doctor do? He probably goes in the office and sits down and cracks jokes with his other doctors and nurses. You know? It just makes me want to sneeze. Okay? I'm not joking. It makes me want to fucking sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. But seriously. <coughs> there you go. Sneeze to that, because seriously, I'm getting sick of people who do that, okay? Because you know what? I've seen people crouch down in pain. I've seen people sitting there and wanting medical help. And what do I always see? Uh, either the patient or the person that's with the patient asks for the doctor, uh, are you ready yet? Oh, no, sir. Um, I'll be with you in, in a minute. ASAP. Yeah, fucking two hours later. You know... Doctors, I'm not going to lie to you, but doctors don't give a flying fuck. You know why I say that? Because doctors don't give a shit. Okay, doctors seem to think that all because they went to university for their degree for medical, they seem to think that they're all that, it seems like. You know, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of crock. Because I'll tell you why right now. You are sitting there in pain. I mean, how would the fucking doctors feel? If they were like us, sitting there in pain, 
while they were on their coffee break. You know, I am, oh my fucking god. You know, what do we deserve? We deserve good health treatment. You know, us Canadians ourselves are covered from this huge company that covers our dental, doctors, medical plan. And what's that called? It's called Manulife. Manulife covers all that shit, okay? You know, we're in Canada, we work hard for that shit. Why the hell should we have to wait two up to four hours for medical assistance instead of laying there in pain and suffering in agony? Why? You know, you fucking doctors seem to act as if you guys shouldn't have to rush for people. That you guys should just do whatever you want, finishing your little paperwork and asking fucking questions. You know, honestly, the nurses do a lot more work than those fucking guys do. I'm telling you, you doctors really, really need to put your mind in perspective and think, okay, you know what, maybe I should help this person. Do you guys think that? No. I'm saying you don't. I'm not going to lie. You don't. If you guys really thought that, it doesn't seem as if you guys even give a shit. You know, how would you feel as, again, if you were lying there in pain and agony? Just think. And that person needs either some medicine or help. And what do you do? You'll just sit there and act as if you... And act as if they should wait because you're busy. You know what? The only way you're getting busy is going in one of the locker rooms and having sex with one of the fucking nurses. That's probably how you're getting busy, pal. Or miss. You know, I'm sick of everybody in that hospital. You know, and the other part is that pisses me off the most is that you're sitting there and you're suffering in pain and all of a sudden the doctor or someone will say, ma'am, calm down. Ma'am, calm down. Or sir, calm down. You know, and you want to know what the, the funniest part is? They give you a fucking attitude. You know, seriously, who the fuck are you guys that you'd be giving fucking patients attitude? You know, you fucking doctors make me freaking ill. You know, there is people suffering. Suffering. Okay, I've witnessed it myself. There's no lies between this. There's no denial. There is truth. There is honesty. There is leadership. Show those three brief perspective words and actions. Let actions speak louder than words. Don't let your little doctoring or anything like that take away the caring that comes out of it. Not have the caring for the money you get every year. Not for the freaking treatments that you guys get. Or knowing that you guys gotta look at that degree on your wall. Use that power that you were given to help the people out who need it the most. And those patients need it the most. Some have cancer. Some are suffering from diabetes. Some have fainted. Oh boy, there's many things I can say that people have suffered from that ended up in the hospital. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Doctors are intelligent. Doctors are honestly are intelligent. They have to work hard for their that, for that degree. Okay? I'm not gonna fucking lie. But seriously, doctors need to be more in their job and not less into on their coffee breaks and talking to other staff about how their weekend was and how terrible this was and all that stuff. You know, you have patients that are suffering. You have patients that need your help. You know, it seems to no, I'm gonna be serious with serious with everybody about this. It seems that nowadays you can't even phone nine one one anymore. The police will come immediately, but you better be careful about getting the freaking ambulance, because when you're being rushed to the hospital, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, but ambulance drivers are a problem big time too. You know, I've been in an ambulance with my girlfriend when she fainted one time, okay? And this fucking ambulance driver is pushing on her chest for uh, the for the patch or whatever they put on their chest. And when she came out of the hospital, she had a fucking bruise on her chest from this guy fucking pushing so fucking hard. You know, what is with these medical people? Honestly, what the fuck is with you guys? 
Do you guys have a bad day and you guys take it out on people? Like, what the fuck is up with you? The only thing that I can say in this situation is that if you people in medical really cared, if you people in medical really, really chose to get this occupation to help others and save lives, then you know what? I suggest now maybe you should change your whole portfolio, the portfolio around and change the mistakes that you made into success. Show those patients that you care. Show those patients that they don't have to be scared in the fucking hospital. Away from their family members. For God's sakes, also change the goddamn visiting hours. That is ridiculous. Visiting hours are freaking ridiculous. From 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Only eight hours? Oh my god. You know, honestly, people have to work in those times. I mean, think about what you guys are saying. Think about the rules that you guys are applying. People, some people have to work starting at 12 and they don't end until probably 8 or 9 o'clock at night. They would have to take a day off of work in order to go see them. Seriously. Do you, do you people realize the stress you guys put under people? Do you guys, you say the hospital is a distressful place. You know, no, it's not. The hospital is becoming a place of a bunch of bullshit and nothing to even think that is positive anymore. Okay? Now, I suggest changes will be made. I hope changes will be fucking made into more visiting hours, less waiting in waiting rooms, and number three, Ignorance towards your patients. Be nicer to them. And four, make sure. And I mean, make goddamn sure you and your staff don't even let them wait in their room and wake them up every five minutes. Because that can really put stress on a patient. And the last thing for number five, don't let them get more scared than they are already from what they're already feeling being in the hospital. I hope Real Talk today gave you a huge knowledge to the doctors and to the patients about how honest that this topic need to be said. Anyways, people, that was Real Talk, episode number 23. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah.